I'm glad that the siblings got their own episode in season four because that before warranted. that I think they were just sort of like side characters that happened from time to time, but I'm right. glad that they got their own adventure. That was very cool. So I guess we're so, into season four now? Yeah, yeah. season four. Cool. And boy, cool. what a season it was. <laughs> um, I don't know. So I mean like going back to the villains, yeah. So we had these villains. So, so yeah, really for the first time... In the series of The Legend of Korra, we have a villain who isn't really as much of a threat to her I- Korra's identity as the Avatar, because the issue, her call to action was really affecting more so the world, and yeah. not not her, less so her role as the Avatar. Like, I don't, like, like you know well, what I'm but, saying? Uh, I would agree with you, but I also <laughs> would say that Kuvira is kind of the opposite of Korra, because Kuvira kind of filled Korra's shoes while she was gone. True, the Air Nomads did their part, but Kuvira was the driving force for whatever you want to call it, the uniting of the Earth Kingdom, because Korra was out of pocket for three years, which was kind of ridiculous. And before we fully jump into Season 4, I just want to recognize Bolin as a lava vendor, and, like, that's amazing. Yeah, I just it was yes. perfect. It, he needed it. Makes it. a lot of sense too. <laughs> he he absolutely needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats to Bolin because like boy, I I sure do love him. He's got a big heart and he's funny. But for the longest time, I he thought was just he was getting screwed <laughs> over. Yeah, he was. I thought he was a severely underwritten character. I thought he was really sort of two dimensional. He was just sort of comic relief, and I don't. That was basically it. Like the whole. Like the whole nut tuck thing, like <laughs> that was such a ploy. That was funny. I mean, is like, this thing was... fast enough to get me away from my crazy waterbending ex girlfriend? Why do you think I built this thing? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so I'm glad that he got lava bending, and it was yeah. cool because like he really wanted to metal bend, but it's like no, like you're gonna you nope. have the ability to do something even rarer than earth bending. <laughs> so. So that was cool. Yeah. So so congrats. So regarding uh, Kuvira, uh, yeah. I just wanted to ask you, Max. Do you think yeah. her so-called uniting of the Earth Nation was really necessary? Um, I think it was, but the fact that somewhere along the line she's like, yeah. I want this to but also be about me because I'm a sad orphan and I want to control everything. I can understand a little bit of her character, but at the same time, and this is just the show's problem in general, I think that there weren't enough episodes. Like, it would have been perfect Uh if every... I think every season needed a few more episodes for it to be, like, 20 in each one. That way it's like, okay, we get a little episodic exploring, so that way, Connor, you're happy with expansion of the world and seeing more of it, and just, you know, more room for character development and even background stories where they're necessary. Like, I'm not satisfied with what little we got from Kuvira. I would have liked to know more about her, but as far as the whole United thing being necessary, I think it was entirely necessary considering where we were left at the end of Season 3 with Zaheer ending the monarchy and and Botching Say being in chaos. Yeah. Okay. It was it, so I think it was necessary the way she did it. Obviously not. Like yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't get it. I don't get where the mental shift happened to like this is all about me and I'm a control freak now. Like out of nowhere. Initially it was like, you know, Sue's not doing her job with what I think her job should have been, like, you know, uniting everything. And this is Kavira saying, like, Sue, like, why aren't you doing this? Sue's like, I don't want to. They'll they'll see me as a conqueror, like, no, I don't want to do this. And then Kavir is like, well, I, well, fine, I'm gonna do it, and I, <laughs> yeah. fine, and I guess, I guess maybe that's how it eventually became about all about her. But I'm her, just like, her final explanation was a, a little difficult for me to buy into personally. I agree, I agree what, completely. It wasn't yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah, like because I found myself throughout the whole season, I was really, I was just, I was having a hard you time. Needed to five try. more episodes. I was but. just trying to understand. So, like, yeah, Max, I, I agree with you that the united, uniting of the Earth Kingdom was necessary, and I agree with you that the way she went about doing it was unnecessary, and that's why mm-hmm. I was having such a hard time understanding where Kovira was coming from, because 
when she right. would say something and everyone else will reply with like you're using fear like to get what you want you're controlling people i'm like and she's like no yeah. no she's like, yeah it's... she's like yeah she's like no i'm not but like i hear everyone... i love the old man calling her out in the first episode <laughs> i know what you've been doing to these other states i'm i'm experienced i see what you're doing like i remember the fire lord you're like the fire lord but earth yeah, like, like stop it. He, he, she telling... was pretty much an early fire lord because you remember when uh, um, what is it? Sozin. Yeah, Sozin and um, Ro- uh, Roku were talking. Yeah. Like when they were younger, it's like we want to expand our beautiful world across. Or everybody deserves yeah. our happiness. Yes, yeah, they it's like, Good really, point. really. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it, like it's it's in a similar. It much. Yeah. Everyone was telling Kovira what she was doing, and Kovira's like, "It's not like that." And I'm sitting here watching <laughs> it. I'm like, "Yes, yes, it is actually." <laughs> it's funny. So, she's just like, "So, but, but I'm the great uniter. Like, what don't you get it? It's yeah. I'm the great uniter. You gotta you deal understand. with it." <laughs> And so, I know yeah, it's best like, for you. <laughs> it was hard. It was hard to accept that little that final speech she gave, like to explain herself, because like, whatever, like she was an orphan and like people didn't see her and like she was always cast aside and whatever. But like, yeah, I don't know. Like, you know what? I remember. I remember. Um, like, I, we heard Kuvira out, and it's like, okay, whatever. I think the creators kind of saved themselves a little bit, gave a little bit more credit to the whole thing when. Cora pointed out um, the contrast, the, the contrast yet similarity between the two of them. Yes, it's like it's like oh hey, like you have all of this power, resources, and potential to do something great. You had this vision in mind, and you know you're stubborn and headstrong, and you don't want to hear anybody else criticizing you. So you're just going to try to do your thing and you know muscle through it, just not really thinking more spiritually and more outside yourself, but, you and, know, and that's for the what pulled it back at the end was yeah. that um, Korra finally achieved a non-headstrong method. <laughs> Spirit bending. Yeah, yeah. Be, that, that's a really good point, because Kavira... Oh, so awesome. Kavira's like, oh, well, I'm like this, so this is what I'm doing and and why and stuff, and like, yeah. Uh. And then Korra's like, well, well, hey, like, you and I are similar in that regard, but look at what I've been doing, like, I messed up too, but like I still could get through it and and stuff. So it's like we so, all suffer. It doesn't mean yeah, we have to was, like go crazy <laughs> and kill everybody. Or, like, yeah, it, it was good to see Cora say like, "Look, hey, I get it, but here's what you can also do." And I'm, pr- <laughs> I'm proof of it. So, yes. so yeah, that's what that's what able was that's what was able to bring it back. And so yeah, like so by the end of it, I was really impressed and satisfied with the growth in Korra. And season four was really what fleshed all of that out. Yep, it was really all of her growth. She, she went on this personal journey, and she she really fought her... So I, I really loved seeing... So in the beginning, when, she's, when mm-hmm. we, she's, we see her and she's wandering around, and she keeps seeing this oh, Korra image alone. of herself... <sighs> Oh. Yeah, it's a par- like that kind of parallels Zuko alone. Exactly, it's so, it's so um, good, it's so great. I really like seeing her having to fight that manifestation of her other self. It it mm-hmm. reminded me of um. It's frightening. It's I mean I I love introspective themes like that, um, especially things on that kind of caliber. It reminded me of that moment in Star Wars: The Empire Strikes Back when Luke walks into the cave and he sees Darth Vader and he beats Darth Vader but then we see that it's Luke's face underneath Darth Vader's mask and yeah. I was like whoa and so like it reminded me of that I love seeing that same formula here in the Legend of Korra and it was cool yeah. seeing Toph um, oh Toph think, that was so great it was so because, awesome like, it was nice just to kind see of you funny again cause... Because pretty much she was exactly the same. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So I loved right it. down to the clothing and the hair yeah. bun and everything. Yeah. <laughs> at first, I thought, like, at first when the season was announced and they released, like, the trailer for the season and it was, like, oh, tough, and everyone's like, oh, we get to see tough. Like, at first, yeah! I, th- at first I thought, I was like, okay, whatever. Like, it's going to be cool to see tough, but this is nothing more than just, like, a nod to, like, the fans that have been around since before yeah, yeah. I started. 
But, hey, we see you. We see you, loyal fans. We we get to here. You go. Here's your top. You, you're but happy I also now. I also think that it's more than that. I really think yes. that top. I I I can't say. I don't think there was a more perfect person to <laughs> be for Cora in in that moment with where she was in her own head. Because I think back to how Toph taught Aang how to earthbend. Oh, yeah. And it's like, just in the same routine of just being, like, just kind of snap out of it kind of thing. Stop exactly. being so, like, melodramatic. Yeah, she did not... Just face your problems. Not, she did not hold Aang's hand at all back then. She did not mm-hmm. hold Korra's hand now. And Consistency, yeah. she was just like... She was like, look... You know what you have to do, just do it, and <laughs> it was cool. So, cause like, so like originally, cause I mean, Toph, Toph was gonna metal bend the rest of the poison out of her, and her body was resisting because like, Cora was still all hung up on Zaheer and everything that had happened to her, yep. and Toph's like, I'm not gonna do this if you're not ready, and so when you are ready, you can do it yourself. So I thought, I thought that was really cool. It wasn't just like a. I mean, this, the Zuko thing, not as She much. was the only old person who really did something. <laughs> That's true. True. True yeah. to form. Toph always gets, always gets it done. It's like, oh, we need to invent metal bending? K. Okay. Oh, we need to destroy uh, this metal airship? K. Okay. Oh, um, we need to get Korra back in shape? K. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, no that was... No problem. We need to beat up, like, 12 mech suits and some other earthbenders in one shot? K. Okay. <laughs> I just thought that was awesome. You give metal vendors a bad name. It's like, wow, like Kuvira, think about that for a minute. The person who invented the thing you're perfect at is like, you're doing it wrong. Like, stop it. Like, why? Like, well, I'm Kuvira hot. Would like, be why like, aren't you, you listening? You don't understand. You don't yeah. understand my motives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're missing the point. <laughs> so, no, that top was great. Uh, do we want to? Well, of course we want to. Do you want to start talking about the uh, uh, Korasami? Uh, before we address that elephant in the room, I uh, I just want to go back and oh, wait. Brain not working. Okay, no. Um, what I thought was really cool with Korra's whole struggle to get the poison out of her and you know regain balance in this whole last uh, season. I think it was really interesting um, because I was thinking in my head, okay, how does she get her spirit energy back or how does she reconnect with uh, Rava? I'm like, tree of time. Just just go to the tree of time, meditate under that, you're good, no problem. And then like when she went there in Korra alone and it didn't work, I was like, uh, how is she going to fix it? The spirits ended up being kind of a letdown. Yeah, yeah, not just the spirits, but, like, the tree of time in and of itself. I'm like, if that, wait, but that was, oh, God, how is how is she going to do this? And I, I just think it was so crazy that it was like, oh, she's just, it's a psychological thing. Like, not only the metal still being in her body, but just she can't let go. She's not, like, mentally strong enough to face the fact that she almost died, but she didn't. She's always, she was stuck in that mindset in that moment, <laughs> like, just constantly, oh, I could have died. I could have died. She couldn't see. Oh, but I didn't, and I can move on. And that's where we see just how different Korra is from Aang, because yeah. Aang absolutely would not have a problem with this. Like the whole I, almost dying thing. I I I think so because he because you you look back, he did die. He was gone at the end of season two. Um, yeah. Oh, you're right. The the, he got, he, bolt thing. He got oh, struck God. by lightning and he was gone. And then Katara brought him back with the spirit water, and True. he didn't seem to. I mean, like it's it's a it's another was, reverse still, aspect where um what is it? What haunted Korra yeah. was like almost herself dying, but what haunted Aang was the harm of his friends because. Yeah. True. He, like, point, of course, <laughs> it was devastating seeing his people die, but even, like, small things like him burning Korra in season one, he carried with him that, like, almost through the whole series kind of thing. Yeah, he didn't, yeah. He didn't go back to firebending until, like, the middle of... Season I, three. The middle of season yeah. three, yeah. When he, like, when, he, when he had to, and it's like, oh, dragons? Woo! Yeah, exactly, like... 
he tried to fire Ben back in season one, and then he didn't touch it for an entire season. So yeah, Amen. It was I. I just recently watched this episode, and I loved it. Like with Zhang Zhang, Zhang Zhang was completely on the money. He's like, <laughs> "Ang, you're not ready. You you can't handle fire yet. You don't know. First of all, you don't know what it is. Second of all, you don't have the fluidity, the rigidity, and the discipline to use it safely." It's alive, and you're going to burn somebody, and oh, look what happened. You burned somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was... Goes to show. Listen to your teachers, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was really cool to see. And this, just speaking of the spirits really quickly, I forgot to mention yeah. this when we were in Season 3, but um, <laughs> season three. I wanted to see it. So, like, okay, so, like, Season 3 is announced. Um, my mom went to San Diego Comic-Con that year. I didn't get to go, but she went to... An uh, she did go to a Korra panel while she was there, and so like the writers and some of the voice actors were there, and they did some readings and stuff, and talked about cool. the season a bit. So when she came back, she told me that season three was going to be really heavy on like spirit stuff, um, and so um, all right, I don't remember exactly, but um, but the 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 point is what I wanted. Yeah. So what I was thinking about, so the spirit portals are open, and, like, spirits can come and mm -hmm. go and whatever. Something that, I, like, the instant that was announced <laughs> and I saw that, I know what, I immediately, what I immediately, yeah, Max, I've talked to you about this before, what yeah. I immediately thought about, I wanted to see Ko, the face stealer. <laughs> I wanted to see him again. You know, for, for a small period of time, I thought um, the uh, negative avatar spirit was Ko. Cause that tree oh. looked dang familiar and just Whoa. like stuff like that. <laughs> well, that I tree, that, wrong, so. <laughs> that Ko is like really Vatu in disguise or something. Yeah, or like, yeah. Or like Ko is a, it almost like, uh, almost like Voldemort, like a piece of him, like <laughs> like Ko like, <laughs> is a Ko is a piece of Vatu and it's like ha ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> explains why Ko messed with the Avatar. Yeah. yeah. So cool. we didn't get to it's see crazy. Ko. I was a little disappointed, but it's okay. But I will say, before we keep going, yeah. um, there's a few different graphic novel series in the last Airbender universe that take place after the show. One of the, one of the things that the show did not answer was uh -huh. Zuko's mother. What's up with Zuko's mother? <laughs> well, there's an arc, there's a story arc in the graphic novels that explains this, and mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give anything away. Uh, both of you should read it. Anyone listening should read it because it's really good. You ought to know what's going on with Zuko's mother and what happened to her. Um, but I will say that um, a plot point involves Ko's mother. Mm -hmm. um, who Ko is the mom? Yeah, who's a, who's right. a, who's a spirit. <laughs> so. Isn't that a terrifying notion? <laughs> yes. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, the so, queen bug. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> excuse me. So that, that's just what reminded me. That's yeah. reminded me of that. But yeah, I just wanted to say it would have been really cool to see Ko because I liked Ko. I mean, like, of course he was terrifying, but I thought he was a really interesting mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, definitely. spirit. So, um, yeah. But, anyways, season four. Everyone has come a super long way. Korra. Yeah. Is Cora is finally a uh, and you know I used to think that people I I used to think that like character growth within this new roster in the Legend of Cora took way too long to develop but when I look at Cora especially Cora and I think back I think it was totally okay like yeah. it finally like, it took a while but like. Man, when it happened, it was so amazing and great to mm -hmm. finally see her as a fully fledged and realized avatar. Balance. She achieved balance. Yeah. Can I just say I love the naming, the name scheme for each of the series. It's like, okay, air, yeah, okay, we get it because she needs to be an airbender. But then, like, spirits. Spirits? And then, like, change. I was like, what? What even? What's going to happen? And then finally just balance. I was like, oh, I was so ready for the season. I'm like, they are going to end it beautifully. Like, everything's going to turn out okay. Cora's going to, like, get back to a great, become a fully uh, realized avatar, like you said, Connor. And I was just, I love it. I love that whole idea going from 
air to spirits to change to balance. I just love it. It's brilliant. Yeah, um, it was cool. Um, <laughs> it was great seeing more Varric. We got more Varric because at the end of season two, he was he was the bad guy. You know, he 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 did something bad, and then even in yeah. season three, so like in season three, he comes back and he's still he's still funny and he's he's a genius. Um, he was I, just too popular he, to keep away. So yeah. like, <laughs> he, he he was Sokka. He was the new Sokka for us. Yeah, I, at least I think so, like humor wise. I can't tell you how happy I was when they, mm. he and Julie finally got together. <laughs> I was I was, was so great. happy that because was, I was, was really all like awesome. I was all like so like here's Julie she she's brilliant and she's yeah, beautiful really awesome. and like like she's literally like the only one in the entire <laughs> world who could, who could constantly and consistently put up with Varric. <laughs> being the way that he is. That he's is the so, most commendable thing. He's like, so wow. high strung. He's so high maintenance. He's so unpredictable, but she's able to deal with it and predict all of it. So I'm like, if you found someone with someone like that, you you, you put a ring on it. You gotta put a ring on it. You gotta hang on <laughs> it. So I was I was and I was did. so happy to Good see that. Him. I agree. Oh. I agree with you completely, Connor. And Talking about Julie for a second, did uh, did you guys think that she was uh, like actually betraying Varric, or did you think that she was like no, the whole double agent thing? Absolutely not. Absolutely All right. not. Okay. I knew. I, I could have believed it personally. I was like, yeah, this could go either way. But at the same time, like, I'm hoping maybe she's like trying to do the right thing somehow and stop the weapon from being developed, like from the inside. Like, that's cool. But in my head, I'm like, eh, it could go either way. But like, I was you, happy. That... I, I think there were too many shots where someone else was talking and it slowly veered onto her. <laughs> she's, like, oh, she's up to something, even though she said she's betraying. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. like what she what she said to Varric was really convincing, but I didn't buy into it. I was like, no, oh, no. No. <laughs> I refuse to believe this. Yeah. Um. So. I was like, yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna. You go. <laughs> okay, I was just gonna something that kind of irked me was how we got introduced to Bolin in this new season like where he was with Kuvira and like as the season progressed like showing how foolish and blind he was for three solid years and I think That's... to myself like Bolin's not that dumb like he's he's not that aloof to where he wouldn't notice like Hey, like, where are those people? The why? Why does it take three years to get through a re-education camp? Like, shouldn't it be like a weekend stay type deal? Like, what's what's going on? Or like, I want how to come... I want to see that some I want to say that some of his ignorance was fueled by, um, just a super high hope of positivity towards everything, Tr just yeah, hoping true. for the best outcome of stuff. But uh, I agree where it. It was kind of ridiculous to a point where he trusted her. It's also possible that it took three years for him to rise through the ranks to then be oh. in a position to where he ha he was then oh. in the inner circle. It's really plausible to consider that he didn't immediately start Great out point. in the inner yeah. circle. Great so, point. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So if he was well, if he I'm was cool there now. for three yeah right. so if he was there for three years he probably was a much lower rank and then he sort of rose through it. Cool. Um, All right. But I mean, like, I'm I still, okay I still see what you're saying, cause like he's, but, but yeah. Um, and just the whole like not siding with Opal wholeheartedly on everything. I'm like, oh, in. You dude, side with that you, girl. You, you, you have it perfect. It. You have it perfect. It took you three seasons <laughs> to get it right. Why are you messing it up now? I know. I was like, I was like, Bolin, Bolin, listen to her. I was like, Bolin, don't, don't lose do her. this, man. Bolin. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this to me. You can't do no! this to me. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't but, fair to me as the viewer to watch you lose another girl. <laughs> right? It's, it's, I can't take it. But it was great that like that all got resolved, and it's they're great. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like season four, it's the season of of balance. It's it's called balance, and there was a lot of that achieved. And so before, so starting. Um, Should we address the elephant? 
Almost. We're we're gonna start talking about Asami right now, but not I... Korra and Asami yet. Um. So it was cool. We should talk about Asami. We've kind of just been like not addressing her. It's like, yeah, Asami happened in season one, and then like we didn't like her in season two, and then it's like, where was she in season three? Okay, oh, it's season four. So it would be good to talk about Asami for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No. I, absolutely. So like, it was cool. It was cool seeing in the beginning of season four, Korra and Asami address all that romance bullcrap that happened, <laughs> and they're all like, like, I'm sorry, I kissed Mako. It's okay, I'm also sorry, I kissed Mako. <laughs> and the Mako's <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that was cool, but what I really, what I really, really liked, and I, you know, they didn't, they didn't have to do this, but in a way it was also necessary, and I'm glad they did it anyway. I'm really glad that Korra, uh, not Korra, I'm really glad that Asami was able to resolve things with her father. That was yeah. great. That was awesome closure. I just thought that was cool. Yeah, that was... So that awesome. Was, Very that warranted. Was, it that was it just gave Asami dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, I've always... And, it, and here's my, pro- my, my problem with Asami up until this season has always yeah. been that I really like Asami as a character, but I have the same problem with her that I do with Bolin. I really thought she was underwritten. Like she mm-hmm. sort of she sort of existed uh, in season one, and then her fa- she's like, "Yo, I'm the daughter of the head of Future Industries," and then Future Industries, that you know, her father became uh, sided with Amon. In season two, she was a victim to like this whole love triangle thing, and like everyone was fed up with it. In season three, so like yeah, going with that, so like when season three was coming around, yeah. I really could have. I really could have seen Asami be more of a character who was on the sidelines, who was sort of just like there to help out here and there because like because like after season 2, like she didn't really have much of a reason to continue hanging out with Team Avatar. Like they uh, one like reason. They helped... she had she had a reason. She she had a reason. <laughs> But I mean, like, I, yeah, I know. But like, <laughs> they helped her with her father and stuff. And then, yeah. you know, after that, that's fine. But like, now her father's in jail. Now she's the head of Future Industries. She has a business to rebuild. And so I could have seen it like the Avatar team. Avatar is going around having to do things, and Asami's like, "Here, have an airship," and like, Boom. And, you know, that, awesome. <laughs> that did, you know, that that did happen. Um, but like, yeah, I. Not a whole lot was going on with Asami up until this point, and so like in season four, it was a little, it was a little awkward for me to see how suddenly close Korra and Asami became. And I understand. Yeah, we'll get to that. So like I understand that season four, in in the chronology in the chronology in the continuity, season four takes place three years after season three. So I, I know that. I know that there, that three years went by that we didn't see. Yeah. Three years that was spent where Korra and Asami were writing letters to each other and stuff like that. Exactly. Um, and that, yeah, Connor, if I may, before we fully jump into that, I just want to say I think it's worth re-watching season three. I haven't done this myself, but uh, I, I plan to. And I remember seeing little, like, breadcrumbs, little small instances where, like, Korra and Asami are, like, having this moment or, like, they're having this um, just agreement on something or just, like, a little bit of what could be interpreted as flirting. I don't know. So I think it's worth rewatching. I I think there's enough of it to warrant what eventually happened with the two of them. And, yes, uh, I want to thank you for acknowledging the three-year gap. That's really crucial. That's very important that, like, through all of Korra's struggles the only person she felt close enough to to talk about it and actually write to was Asami. And she did it for three years, so Asami was obviously reciprocating that. So there is an entire hidden dimension to their relationship that we just can't see. We just have to know that it was there during those three years. And but that's my spiel. You know, I'll let you guys go on. You know, the thing about that is... is um, uh, Everyone was really happy because it was Korra and Asami, and it was something really new. But if it were Korra and another guy, I think a lot of viewers would not be satisfied with breadcrumbs. You know, I just well, of course, yes, under, exactly. understanding us. But that's just the problem with the show and like them not yeah, having enough airtime. I, I good point I though, just, Paul. 
just any relationship in a story, a TV series or something, you want to see the culmination of it all, you know? Which, which, so yeah. I think it was kind of underhanded, but, you know, I understand why it was because Nickelodeon yeah. could only let them get away with so much. Right, and also um, I, I've had this discussion with people, like, they say, oh, like, Last Airbender, that was so great, like, they had so much time to, like, we had this whole rock-solid uh, Aang and Katara thing from, like, the get-go, and then we got to, like, follow that the whole time. Well, it's like, yes, like, that's why it was special, that's why we were allowed. It's two completely different things. You have childhood, like, puppy dog love, which becomes strong, airtight friendship, hit, pun intended, and then that eventually grows into, like, a super awesome, strong relationship, then they have kids, and it's all great. With with Cora, she's like completely new to the whole thing. It's like, I like what are relationships? How do she's she's you know experimenting? She's and she had the whole thing with Mako, and that didn't work out great. And I think before I get ahead of myself, I just want to cap it off with there's this other psychological thing that I think happened to her with nearly being murdered by three different powerful scary men. And uh-huh. with, like that whole mindset, so I can, I can, I can empathize with the shift in interest and the fact that like Asami is just there, and they like they have this bond that we can't really see and understand. We just kind of have to assume <laughs> that it was there, given what the creators gave us at the end. Yeah. Okay. Because I remember like. So I guess we're, we're we are talking about Korra and Asami now. Like we're there. Yeah. The ship, it happened. The All ship right. has sailed, gents. We are we're in this yeah we're in this realm now. So like I remember when it first because I wasn't thinking about the three year gap and like that's why it was hard for me to translate that whole mm-hmm. relationship. And so yeah. originally I thought that it was unjustified. That opinion has changed, but I will agree with Paul when he called it underhanded. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul, how so? Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt, Connor. I just... Well, just because... And, and like he like he said, just because of what Nickelodeon had to work with. And so, mm. like, we didn't get to have it be fleshed out or something. And so, like, again, like, it was just hard okay. to translate because of the whole three... Like, understanding the whole three-year gap, like you said, is crucial and it's easy to forget that three years just because, right. like they say, well, three years happened, and now we're back here, and everything's happening now. But you gotta mm-hmm. remember that three, like a lot, can happen in three years. So just, just the visual delivery <laughs> was incredibly minute. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I yeah, so I mean, I like, agree. so okay, so Korra and Asami, it's it's been confirmed by the writers. It's canon. Yep. It's confirmed that they. They are romantically interested in, in each other. I it doesn't. Yeah, go ahead. I don't have a problem with that. Um, something that I do have a problem with. People are calling them lesbians. They're not lesbians. They're bisexual. There's a difference. Labels. Um, so just 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 know that they're not lesbians. Right. They're 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 a bisexual couple. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't have a problem with it. I I think. I think it's really cool and important to have that kind of representation, especially in a cartoon. Um, yeah. And so, because, you True. know, I think we're at that point where, you know, that should, I think that should be okay. Um, so, Yay, tolerance, acceptance. It's <laughs> like it's like we're in something called the future, like past the 60s or something. I don't know. That's, it's just, I, I, I agree completely, Connor. It's I was really... Uh, surprised, but uh, happy with where the creators went with this and the message that they're sending. You're completely right that this is a positive message saying, hey, you know, different types of couples are okay and it's acceptable and here you go, it happened. Yeah. Um, Part of me also... So, like, I don't have a problem with them being together or anything, but, like, part Mm -hmm. of me also feels a little strange... Just because it's a Sami, and like, like part of me wants to look at it and be like, okay, well now she's just another love interest. Like, oh, I don't know. her as a character, I feel you. Yeah, her as a character, because like, like it's totally like I totally, it's totally cool, and I I completely value her role as a close friend to Korra, what she was able to provide Korra 
as an outlet, as a safe place that Cora can go to, especially when she was feeling like she had no one else. Um, and so that That's was fine. cool. And so, like, yeah. you know, I mean, like, that can happen. Like, you get that close to someone and you can develop feelings for for them. But, like, just after seeing all that stuff with Mako and Korra and Asami, I was just like, okay, like, it just felt like everyone was, like, really romantically spread thin. And, like, Bolin was, like, the only one who got it right after trial and <laughs> error. Like, like... <coughs> like so awesome. Like... It, it was like okay, Bolin tried to go. Bolin tried to date inside the circle. Yeah. That didn't work. Bolin's like, screw this. I'm I'm stepping outside the circle. Meanwhile, everyone Royalty. else is like, let's just keep trying every combination of dating we'll get this right. ourselves we and see it. what works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. like that's. Yeah, you go, Paul. Oh, I was just gonna say, I I just found it. I, I didn't really get them being friends like after the whole Mako thing, even though they don't have a direct problem with each other. Maybe that's just how I view things, but I feel like it would be way too awkward no matter who it was if I became friends with a guy my girlfriend dumped me for or cheated on me with or something. It's like, I don't think I could do that, if yeah. that makes sense. No, it, Hashtag it three year gap. <laughs> we we will never know. But you know what I want? I want them to release like a novel or something, like a small little book. Maybe a, maybe not a graphic novel, but like here's a collection of all the letters between Kara and Asami. Here you go. Here's how their <laughs> love develops. I don't know. Some some kind of closure in that regard. But yeah. yeah, Paul, you make a good point. It's just we it it's kind of where we're always going to be at. We we want more. We we would have liked more. And yeah. I, I, yeah. But I think what we were given was, I don't know, I, I was satisfied with it. And you, you make a point that, like, oh, that's really awkward. Like, why would that ever happen? Life is weird, and people change in opinions and hashtag three-year gaps. So. <laughs> the, well, that, that, that thought occurred strongest to me during, okay. like, end of season two, season three-ish, like, after that huge, like, mess happened kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even if what you're asking for, Max, like with the letters and stuff, doesn't happen, I'm I'm pretty darn convinced that um, they're going to, like what they did with the last Avatar universe, they're going to do with the Korra universe, and we're going to see some graphic novels. I mean, there's money, already been... making money. <laughs> but even then, like, there's still a lot to tell. Like, this is still... Yeah. This is still a growing universe. And so, like, the last Avatar has things that deal with how Republic City formed. Um, that's really cool. I want, that's mother. called the... What's that called again? The Promise? The pro Yeah, that's that's cool. the Promise. The Promise um, and the Search. The Search, uh -huh. yeah. Um, there's a new series. Uh, there's a new arc. Um, I only have the first volume of that one, and I'm not entirely sure what it's about, but it's called The Rift. Um, mm. And so I'm looking to that as well. Um, but I think... I definitely didn't think that's going to happen with Korra as well. I mean, Korra, that's cool. pretty cool. recently, a Korra video game came out um, that's oh, available yeah, on that. all sorts of different platforms, 3DS included, so you can play it on 3DS. Um, and it's a, it's its own story. I was watching a video with uh, interviewing the voice actors, um, the voice actor for Korra, Mako, and Bolin, and they were talking about the video game. And if I remember correctly, they said the story takes place... Um, in between books two and three, um, which would which is awesome. cool. So I want to look into that. Um, you know, there's there's just a lot of stuff to touch on. Um, so yeah, but yeah, Max, I'm I'm with you too, um, Paul. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you feel the same way. Like this this whole universe, whether it's the last Avatar or uh, I'm sorry, the last Airbender or. Legend of Korra, this entire universe is so fascinating. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. And there is just, Ugh. there's so much, there's so much to it, and both of these series have, have touched on so much, but I, like, Paul, I remember we were talking about music, and we were talking, you were talking about bands that, even if they've been around for a while, there's some bands that you feel that they still have a lot to give, and I Copeland. think that, <laughs> yeah, like Copeland, um, you know, 
We have that conversation. I think too. Avatar still has a lot to give. To, I agree. Um, I would agree completely. <laughs> I want. I want. I want the next. I want an earthbending avatar. Like, let's. Let's like. Can that happen now? <laughs> that's that's what we're looking for. I want to see. You know what? I had I had a crazy idea the other or, or a while back after uh, the finale happened. I'm like, okay. Well, with what Prince Wu said at, at the wedding, with his whole desire to like turn the Earth Kingdom into a democracy and like separate the states. I'm thinking like that sounds to me like. Uh, looking like America or like the, world like of the United Atari States, organized political kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> well, even even more so. Just hear me out on this crazy idea. What if like what they decided to do next? Like Nickelodeon releases a new show. It's the Avatar universe, but live action. Like what the bending world would look like in our own time and age. And they could make it really cool with special effects. I don't know. I just I had the idea that. It could be cool. You just, but not. Don't let M Night Shyamalan anywhere near the project, uh, like whatsoever. Oh gosh! I, I apologize for bringing that up. Yeah. But anyway, I think yeah. it could be done. I think it could be done right. But even r- scratch that whole idea. I just want another season, and I want an Earth Avatar. <laughs> I want it to happen. It's yeah. You know, it's. Uh, I was I was sad to see it go. I was. I mean, I was sad to see The Last Airbender go, and I think, gosh, I thought that Give The Last Airbender in its entirety was basically a flawless show yes. with a flawless ending. Yes. And even mm-hmm. even though I was so satisfied with how everything ended, I was like, I'm sad <laughs> to see it go. I want more. What more can they even do? And they thought Clara. away. <laughs> they did the search. They did the promise. They're doing the rift. And now, 70 years later, we have Korra, but now Korra is done, and I'm like, I still want more. So I think I'm... they'll deliver. I think it just is a matter of time and patience. Absolutely. You know, one thing I hope that they really spend a lot more time on is what? Um, just the past depth of the main characters, because there were so so little like flashbacks besides what is it uh, the chief Beifong, which i thought was kind of a strange choice we hardly got to see anything mm-hmm. visually of like um, mako and bolin being orphans or oh, making yeah. their characters okay. you know which i thought in the original series gave so much depth to a lot of the characters and i really missed that in this series and i i felt like it made them a little flatter in this where it was just like verbal comments here and there it's like yeah we were orphans but you know you didn't really see him suffer too much through that and just things right. like that or like sue had another dad he was a cool guy you don't need to know his name I don't know uh, yeah. what is no. going on with this family tree with <laughs> no. two because like because like okay, like when season one started and we we met Lynn and she's all like, yeah, I'm Toph's daughter. Like um, the first thing that I thought of, I was like, <laughs> I want to, I want to know who <laughs> had the balls. Yeah. To, like, <laughs> with Toph. like who was man enough to do that? Because like I know I'm not. Like, like, like I want to know who. Like I want to find the guy that like Toph was like, you're cool enough to do this with. Because like. Nothing ever satisfies Toph because she's the ultimate badass. Right, like, right. I was like, who was able to have a daughter with the ultimate badass? <laughs> so, but we never, <coughs> we we never found out, and so. Well, we know we know uh, Lynn's dad. His name uh, it starts with a K. My mind escapes me. Someone with the interwebs. Find he, it. Well, she just she just said his name, and that's it. So yeah. like yeah. we, I mean, like there was there was there was a, a good, or something. There was a there was a good amount of light shed, good enough. There was there was a lot of nice. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. I was really yeah, glad to see. I was really glad to see development between Lin and Sue and see backstory with that. That was um, awesome. I liked it. So oh, you said that was a weird choice. Why'd you Why'd you think so? Because they didn't give enough attention to the main characters' pasts, like <laughs> compared to that. In my you opinion, you have a point. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a strange choice from, like, again, we've been saying, like, the seasons are so short, and it's so, like, there's so little time to, like, deliver everything. Is like, why why the chief of police? I like, think even, they had to do that. Even there wasn't too much past stuff. Well, yeah. what, do we need, what do we need to know from Korra? She's the Avatar. we got to deal with yeah. it. 
Um, the, the main character, I like, I can understand because we saw her development, but I guess it's more of a uh, Mako and Boleyn. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I more agree More of them would have been nice. Like, like, I see their family, like, though. I feel like I know Jet more than I know Mako and Boleyn. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Jet, Jet had two episodes, so... Well, but, well... Well, we never saw flashbacks of Jet as a child or him, like, losing his parents. But, no, the, well, yeah, Jet came back we, to that we, whole thing with, like, Loud Guy. and that was a flashback of firebenders destroying his town there really was? fast and stuff. Yeah, yeah, there was. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, so, uh, I mean, even without a flashback, well, yeah. like, we, you know, okay. he, he, did, he did talk about, he, even if there wasn't a flashback, he still talks about what happened to him with the Fire Nation and, like, why... He hates them and why he's a freedom fighter. And so, like, I don't know, like, his actions really reflected what he told us about himself. But then, like, we sort of, I mean, like, I don't know. But then, like, here we have we have Mako and Bolin, and, and we're like, oh, they're like, okay, we're brothers and we're orphans and we've lived on the streets. And, and okay. we're pro-benders and, we and this is how we make a seasons. living. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, come on. Get, guys, <laughs> hang on. I want to give credit to Mako and Bolin for a second. First off, Mako... He is such a badass. He's an amazingly powerful bender. He was the only one able to do anything against Amon. If you think, like, you go back and you rewatch that, like, okay, so Korra got her bend bending taken away, mm -hmm. and um, you got Mako, he's all tied up with the whole blood bending thing. And all he does is he summons up all of his energy and strength, and while he's got his hands basically attached to his chest, he lightning bends. He just like, <laughs> and just zaps Amon, and even Amon is like, huh, no one's ever bested me like that before. So, it's just, I think they're great characters in that regard, but as far as more development and more story, but, well, because Mako had, like, pieces that alluded to his past, like the scarf that his dad gave him, and we got to see their whole family in, uh, I think, season three it was, so yeah, we got a little bit of closer, closure in that regard. Um, so I don't want to like totally disregard them as awesome characters with a decent yeah. amount of background, but it's, again, it's here, here we are. We want more. It's just a presentation choice that I prefer more. Like we, he, yeah, he talked obviously. about this. Part, I agree with you. Like it's his last heirloom, but um, what what I think would have hit me more is if we just saw an image of his dad putting the scarf around his neck or something, because True. you you think back. They could have done that. Yeah, you think back to something like Zuko. There's this just one scene where he's standing on the beach, and it it's a picture. Back. It's like not even like an it, animated thing. It, All they do is just, like the hand from face to face. His dad like holding his shoulder on the beach, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, and it says so much. Yeah, you know? it's that stuff that really sticks with you because we yeah. like we you the instant you mes mentioned that like that image flashed in all of our minds. I can see yeah. it perfectly. Yeah. Yep. So. Just stuff like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, they, they could, I, I yeah. think uh, I think we do need to wrap up. <laughs> Is there any like uh, long ranging uh, comments or like finishing comments you guys want to say to the series and stuff? You guys have both brought on so many excellent points, and I've like really seen stuff in like different light. So thanks for cool. that. But, yeah, yeah, you as well, Paul. This was a, a good talk. I really I'm seeing a whole lot more to this universe. But just to like one last thing, I really. I love spirit bending. I love that ability and how crazy it is that Kuvira's ultimate weapon was the outlet for a brand new spirit portal. Like, it was so powerful and Korra was so strong that she was like, no, rather than, like, dying to this spirit energy that would, like, kill anything else, I'm just going to redirect it and let it shove us into the spirit world. And I'm going to punch portal. it in the face. <laughs> <laughs> First that through was the really <laughs> yeah, it was, I, I loved that aspect, and just, um, I think the ending was really poetically done well, with Korra and Asami, like, going on a vacation, or honeymoon, to <laughs> the spirit world, I just thought that was really neat, it's like, wow, how more romantic can you get, like, a, a getaway into the spirit world, that's, that's really cool, and just, there you go, the end. I was super sad, though. I'm like, why is it over? Why? I think my last comment... So, I I think The Legend of Korra has a lot of rewatch value. Um, I think it's actually necessary to rewatch the whole thing. Yep. Um, because my experience going through it the first time, it was completely different from 
The Last Airbender. Um, I, I mean, I've rewatched every episode of The Last Airbender probably at least seven times. I know that oh, whole man. thing yeah. front to back. Um, and I rewatched it just because I wanted to see all of it again, just because I was so in love with the show. I want to go back and rewatch The Legend of Korra because how I'm looking at the whole show is different now from how it was when I was in season one, or even two right. or three. I like, agree. Yeah. like it's season totally four season four changed a lot of things for me in how I looked at the whole show. And mm-hmm. so I want to go back and start from the beginning again with this new perception that season four gave me. Um, so I can really find a lot more clarity and understanding and acceptance and stuff. And so I can be a little less mad at Cora in season two. Um, right. And, you, you, know, can, like, so, you can understand where she's coming from and all that stuff. <laughs> certainly. And so I I would encourage anyone who's watched through the entire thing to watch through it again because my experience with with this series was that it had a lot of ups and it also had a lot of downs. It was pretty rocky. Um, but It was a great season, ride. But yeah, but yeah, like I said, season four was really able to smooth a lot of things out. And so I want to go back and enjoy a much smoother ride. Um, going through you, the Legend yeah. of Korra. And you know, here at the Fan Voice, that's one of the things we really encourage is to just not only have our guest speakers as well as me and Andrew and as well as other commentators to just bring all their opinions together to maybe soften each other's hearts on like different aspects of things and really enjoy things in a universal perspective to see the greatest in every aspect through different people's eyes and explanations, you know? Yeah. Well Absolutely. said, Paul. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I think I think that'll do it. Uh, great discussion, guys. <laughs> Woo! Um, we did it. That's a wrap. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Connor, for joining me for this excellent discussion. Thank you, absolutely. everyone. Thank you for, for having uh, me. It was listening. awesome. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you back. And so Definitely. I guess I'll give the routine where you can – Find us where our listeners can find us. It'll be uh, youtube.com slash the fanvoice podcast, facebook.com slash the fanvoice podcast, Twitter at fanvoice podcast, our email fan at the fanvoice.com, and of course our website, the fanvoice.com, where you can find news, reviews, articles, as well as downloads of our each of our podcasts, including this one. So, yeah. <laughs> So everybody, thank you, thank you for joining me once again. And oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank <laughs> Thanks, you. Paul. You're awesome. <laughs> thank you. Hashtag Mako 2014. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That actually. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Yep. Later. Right. See you later. Peace.